Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Taylin Flores, registered dietitian. I'm gonna get started on our second recipe, and that's going to be a baked pear spiced oatmeal. So tasty, I'm so excited for you guys to try this one. The main pair for our cranberry spice pear baked oatmeal is the Bartlett pear. The Bartlett pear is the softest, juiciest, sweetest of all the pears, and thus it bruises so easily. So easily. I bought these yesterday. It hasn't even been 24 hours. So um, be very delicate with it. But the good thing about the pears for this recipe is that we're going to chop them and mix them into our oatmeal and bake them. So any scarring or bruising, as long as it's not too damaged and too brown, is going to be fine in this recipe. What's interesting about Bartlett pears is that they actually change color as they ripen. But the traditional way to check if your pear is ripe, regardless of the type of pear, is to check the neck. And that means you're gonna take your finger and press it at the top of the pear. And if you feel it give and it doesn't really bounce back, then that means your pear is ripe and ready to go. So in our recipe, we're using two ripe Bartlett pears, two cups of oatmeal, a half a cup of chopped nuts of your choice, I'm using walnuts, cinnamon, baking powder, about three quarters cup to a cup of fresh cranberries, a little bit of salt, vanilla, mashed banana, believe it or not. I'm gonna make this completely vegan, so I'll be using maple syrup instead of honey. And I'll be using a plant butter instead of real butter. You could also use coconut oil and some soy milk. Our oven has reached 375 degrees, so that's ready to go. I need to peel my pears. The skin comes off so easily. And then I'm going to chop them up into bite-sized pieces. Now, when I eat pears normally, I do not peel them because the skin offers so much added fiber, which is gonna be a prebiotic to your gut. And we wanna feed those gut microbes because if we don't feed them, they die out. And then we lose them and they're really hard to repopulate and bring back. So typically I do eat the skin. That being said, since pears are on the, ooh, so juicy, since pears are on the dirty dozen list, if you can afford to get organic pears, which are typically um, 12 cents more per ounce than conventional pears, it's gonna be worth it because the dirty dozen list means it's used, um, or excuse me, it's grown with a lot of pesticides and herbicides more so than some of the other fruits. And the dirty dozen typically consists of fruits or vegetables to which we eat the skin. So you don't have that natural protective barrier like you do with an avocado or a banana or a pineapple. It's edible or it's got a thin skin. And so we're gonna be more likely to ingest those toxins. So if you can, get organic. Back to our pears, I'm just cutting around the core to get some chopped pear pieces. You don't need to cut them uniformly. It's not gonna be presented beautifully on a salad. It's gonna be mixed into our baked oatmeal. So don't stress out about the perfection of your cut here. Ta-da! Just like with our poached pears, I'm gonna take a lemon and just drizzle some lemon juice over the pears. And I have my hand underneath to catch any seeds. I don't accidentally want those in my oatmeal. I'm just kind of tossing those to prevent that browning, that oxidation from taking place. Go ahead and set your pears aside and we will gather our dry ingredients next. Get a mixing bowl and go ahead and add your dry ingredients together. Two cups of oats one teaspoon of cinnamon, quarter teaspoon of salt, three quarters teaspoon of baking powder. And if you want to add any other spices at this time, like allspice, pumpkin spice, nutmeg, um, now would be a good time to do that. 
Whisk everything together and set aside because now we're going to prep our wet ingredients. We have to mash up our banana. Just gonna rip this sucker in half. Now, ideally, I would have timed my browning of bananas accurately, and I would have waited until this banana got a little brown and spotty because it's gonna make it sweeter, so it'll be more like a sugar replacement instead of banana flavor. But mine is not brown and spotty, so um, that's my main recommendation for you to try out. However, this will work just fine. Bananas are still sweet, they're still sugary, so it'll work out well. So I'm just mashing it with a like, salad serving fork. And boom. Very good to go. Okay, let's add our soy milk. I have one and a quarter cup of soy milk. Our maple syrup, or you can use honey or agave. Two tablespoons maple syrup. Vanilla extract, two teaspoons of this. I suppose you could use almond extract, but that's really strong. So I would use the less than two teaspoons, likely mm, a half a teaspoon. And your melted butter. And now we mix. Now traditional baked oatmeal recipes do call for one egg, but since I'm making this recipe entirely plant-based and vegan, I'm gonna omit the egg. We do have baking powder in here, so it should still rise. But if you are not on an egg-free diet, go ahead and add a scrambled egg, um, a raw scrambled egg, into the wet mixture at this time. I suppose one could use a flax egg as well, uh, but I don't have any today, so we're just gonna go au naturel. Add your wet ingredients into your dry ingredients. Mix until combined. And then fold in your cranberries. Fold in your pear. And lastly, fold in your diced walnuts. Let's spray our baking dish. I'm using an eight by eight baking dish. You could also use a nine by nine baking dish and that will work just fine. your mixture in. Go ahead and smooth it out. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more cinnamon at the top for aesthetic's sake. And just because I really love cinnamon. <laughs> We're going to pop this in the oven for about 20 minutes. To check for doneness, take a toothpick, insert it in the middle, and pull it out. It should come out clean. Cut your baked oatmeal into nine slices and use this as a meal. Or you can cut it into 12 slices and use this as a snack. Mmm, enjoy.